classic performance. It's a beautiful day, and today we're going to be taking a look at classic wooden boats. Uh, mahogany, mostly runabout boats, some utilitarian boats, maybe a couple fiberglass boats, a racing boat, a couple racing boats actually. Uh, but we're here at beautiful Lake Greenwood, Lake Greenwood, South Carolina, at a classic wooden boat show. So let's get started. Let's take a tour and to show you these beautiful boats in person. We'll kind of talk about each one just a little bit. Got Mojo here, and this is a 1951 Jersey Speed Skiff. Uh, very interesting helm here too, where the, the steering wheel goes straight down. So the name of this boat is It's Someday. Uh, it's a Chris Craft Capri and uh, it's a 1958 and you can see by uh, all the awards uh, this is a very uh, a very well done boat accumulating a lot of awards and interestingly enough we've got the old skis if you remember the uh, Cypress Garden uh, Dick Pope Jr. skis uh, that go with it you know, one of the things I've always liked about the, the Chris Craft Capris, of course, is the, the blonde wood down the center and the back kind of curls around. But these also have a curved windshield, uh, which is very sporty. Uh, so something really nice about the Capris I like is that, is that curved windshield. And this, of course, has the flathead six-cylinder motor in it. Uh, it's a KFL, uh, straight six, 131 horsepower. So this is Paradise Bound. This is a 1937, 19-foot Chris, Chris Craft custom runabout. Uh, very similar to the Capri we just looked at. Kind of the same, kind of the same uh, semi-barrel back, uh, flathead six, and uh, but back, you know, in 37, you didn't have the wraparound windshield. So this has more of the traditional squared-off windshield from the 30s and uh, even in the 40s. But still, just a, you know, every one of these is, is finished like a piece of furniture. You just look at the, the caulking in here and the, 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 the detail uh, to everything. You know, it's, it's hard to believe that these are actually sitting in the water. Uh, just absolutely pristine uh, pieces of art. So what we're looking at right here is a boat named Little Biddy. Uh, this is a, a 1937 16-foot Chris Craft, uh, Chris Craft Special Racer, and it also has uh, the straight six-cylinder engine in it and with generator, and we can maybe see, I don't know if we can see on the side of it, oh, I can't uh, uh, see if it has the side draft carburetors, uh, but this is, I believe I'm using the correct terminology, a barrel back, a barrel back boat, because it's rounded like a barrel. Let's give you a quick look at it, but this is a, a racing boat, so it only has two seats here, and uh, not a whole lot of not a whole lot uh, of room for passengers. And this boat is owned by uh, uh, Craig Miller from Cummings, Georgia. And actually, Craig tells us that this boat was bought at a charity auction, and it was previously owned by Alan Jackson. So, a little tidbit of information that even makes uh, this particular Chris Craft Racer Special even more special. And this is Lisa Ann. This is a Chris Craft, Chris Craft 100, a 1930, uh, 20 feet long, and it has a Crusader 8-cylinder, uh, 220 horsepower motor in it. Clear. Yeah, you can definitely hear the sound of the V8. Bon voyage. Great sound in boat. What we've got over here is a 1957 18-foot uh, Chris Craft Sea Skiff. Uh, so this is a very utilitarian type of boat. Uh, beautiful floor in it. And uh, you can get a lot of people on here. And, uh, 
just for touring, for fishing, uh, whatever you want to do. It's just a, uh, a very utilitarian kind of boat uh, versus the uh, individual cockpit of these two hacker crafts over here. So what we're looking at right here is a 1937 hacker craft. And uh, interestingly enough, this boat was just recently restored. Uh, it's got modern uh, small block Chevy power in it, but you can just take a look at uh, the condition of some of these boats here. Uh, you know, before they were restored in the process uh, that, it, that it takes uh, to restore one of these boats and, and how you can bring one back from seemingly uh, the debt. But, uh, just look at the beautiful motor in here. It has an Edelbrock intake, modern uh, power upgrade, Edelbrock carburetor, and uh, just stunning, stunning hacker craft right here. Beautiful controls and just super nice, super nice finish on this mahogany. Beautiful hacker craft. So, you know, we looked at the pictures of this boat and the restoration process and how these things can be brought back uh, here, resurrected, just so you remember the 1937 uh, Packer craft. And we're talking with Brian Wheeler, the owner. Brian, how many how many screws are in the boat? Uh, 8,600. So you've got you've got 8,600 yeah. screws in this boat, uh, and that's and, and every every board in this thing is put together with a screw fastener. It's a brass a brass screw. Right, silicone bronze screws. Okay. Yeah, they're they're better. The original screws were brass. The silicone bronze is a tougher alloy. Okay. Much stronger. And, uh, you, you don't see them all from here, but if you get out and look, you'll see a bone. There's a screw buried under every bone. Yeah, and you can see the where they're right here where they're plugged. There's a plug here, and a plug here, and a plug here. So every one of these planks has a screw on it. Absolutely, yeah, every one of them. And the bottom uh -huh. side had 1,600 screws. To, to, to hold, hold the bottom, bottom planks yeah, on there. All the bottom planks. 1,600 of them that are underwater right yeah. now. At the end of the day, you're risking your tire. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> really wow. screws in, because you try to get the bottom on as quick as you can. Uh -huh. and, and I see you got a, a center bolt. Uh, that's, is that a Vortec style 350 Chevy in it? Yeah, actually, so that, that is an actual uh, Marine Chris Craft men 60s vintage. Mm -hmm. So the bottom half is a small block Chevy. And uh, it was a 283, but I built it back the interchangeable with the same era 350 block. Yeah. And then I put Vortec heads on it, which gives it about 50 more horsepower just by sure. the technology of the heads. Uh huh. So, so what? What's the what's the top speed on this boat uh, with this the upgraded boat, power plant? Yeah, with this power plant, I hit 51 mile an hour with it, which is pretty fast. Wow, for that's a that's boat. that's moving along. Yeah, 51 miles an hour. Yeah. Great. So on the, on the hacker craft, the production uh, hacker craft here and here. So you say they produced about one a month. One a month. So that's, what, that's what they figure for so twelve a year. So you've got twelve of these boats only produced in a year. So the the entire production run of this boat throughout the years it was produced was probably what sixty. Probably sixty of this hull design, and then I think around forty. 40, 41, that's a 41, they changed the hull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little more rounded in the back. So that just gives you an idea how rare this boat is. Throughout its whole production run, there were 60 produced, uh, and that's one a month. And if you're interested in the model, uh, this is the Hackercraft Runabout Deluxe. And then right next door over here with the beautiful red bottom, we've got uh, another Hackercraft. And this is uh, a cockpit forward, a 1941, 19 foot hacker craft with a 283 Chevy V8. Uh, and again, just beautiful finishes on these machines. Uh, beautiful engine turned uh, dash there. Just stunning. And I don't know if you call this a barrel back. I kind of call it a barrel back, the way this kind of curves around instead of just a squared off transom. So this is probably the longest boat that's here. It's 28 feet long, and this is a Dodge Gold Cup. And uh, you just look at the, uh, the, the interesting things here of, of how the 
the rudder works with cables going back to the steering wheel. And uh, this particular Dodge Gold Cup uh, is powered by a big block Chevy. And this is a 1925 boat. And under the hood here, we've got a modern power plant. This is a big block Chevy. And uh, fits in there beautifully and it helps to make this boat that much more reliable. You know, it's a rough day out here. Um, these docks are moving around a good bit. So you just look at the length of this boat right here. Uh, this is 25, 28 feet uh, of just gorgeous woodwork. So this boat right here is an Old Town. Uh, you might be familiar with Old Town boats uh, because you might have had an Old Town canoe at one point in time. Uh, but this is an Old, old Town with a, uh, a vintage Heaven Root outboard on it. And it's uh, just a beautiful uh, wooden boat where you can see uh, all the planking on the interior of it. And we've got some oars here as well on either side. Uh, I guess if you have a vintage a vintage outboard like this uh, you might need you might be in a situation where you would need these oars so this is not a wooden boat here this is a 1961 as we get into the 60s uh, the wood kind of goes away and fiberglass comes to be the uh, uh, the choice of material for the hulls and for the construction but obviously it's a uh, uh, less expensive and more affordable but this is a 1961 17 foot uh, Dorset Catalina uh, with a uh, Evinrude 670 on it, a vintage correct Evinrude 670. Uh, and, and you can see this Catalina looks to be very original. Uh, just so you can see some of the, the aging of the gel coat on there. Um, and I guess you can kind of call this uh, an overnighter. You could, you could spend, the, uh, spend the night here in this door set. And uh, it looks like just a beautiful original, original boat. You know, we just we just looked at over here at the uh, the 61 door set. This is a 61 lineman run about 16 foot with an Evernrude Root 70 on it. Um, and, and this again is 1961. This lineman right here, very utilitarian, uh, very usable boat. Uh, really no, you know, paneling or finishing on the inside, just kind of bare. Uh, but this would have been a, a very functional boat uh, back in the day. Uh, that's the spotlight right here and that's your horn and of course your navigation lights and flags and this looks to be just a, a, a sheet here on the front instead of individual uh, planking like we have seen on some of the others That's what it looked like when I brought it home to the wife. Yeah. You brought it home to the wife looking like that. <laughs> she, did, she didn't tell you to take it back where you found it? No. No, but it was, you know, it was a basket yeah, case. You can see how. Yeah. yeah. It it's amazing how you could bring these boats back. But then there's the, you know, the restoration of the engine. And, and you did the, the restoration I, work I did yourself? everything. I did the engine. I built, oops, built the trailer. Mm. Uh, Restored that wheel. Yeah, yeah. I did everything. And this is a 1959 59. Chris Craft Sportsman. Sportsman, so a kind of utilitarian it's a utility. utility boat. Okay. I don't know if you know but the stripes are not straight with the keel. Uh huh. The king plank is wider here than it is. Here. So this king plank down the center is wider from the back to the front. Yes. And then. And now is this is this caulking in here between these? That is caulking. That is caulking. And then each one of these plugs, that's a plug where a where a fastener is. And what kind of fasteners are you using? You can maybe Silicon see these. So bronze wood screws. Silicon bronze wood screws. But this whole boat is epoxy sealed with a penetrating epoxy. Okay. Uh, I replaced every piece of wood on it. So this is what we would call a no sulk. Hole. And it has, and, and you use the combination of the penetrating epoxy, and it's all glued together with 
3M5200, which is a, okay. an adhesive coffin. Adhesive first, coffin second. I got it. And uh, it's very aggressive polyurethane glue. Hmm. And so the whole boat's glued together with that. Wow. So it doesn't move so much. And then the exterior finish here is what? Well, that's Christmas stain. Yeah. So it's a stain, but is this a like a, a, a varnish or an epoxy or a... It's all varnish. It's all varnish? It's all varnish. There's probably 20 plus coats I lost count after about 18. And then you sand it and buff it? You sand it. Well, you don't buff it, but you, you got to sand it and... Uh, yeah, we'll uh, you know, wet sand, whatever. You do a, a an amber varnish uh -huh. to get the to get the tone right, get the color right. You do about 15, 18 coats of the amber varnish, mm -hmm. and then you uh, at some point you stop and then you put your coffee in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, it's amazing it's simple it's just time intensive yeah, the caulking is all it is is it's a white caulking and uh, you take a wet sponge squeeze it in there you take a wet sponge and you wipe it like, kind of like, like grouting right, on a tile yeah, yeah. exactly like grouting tile great and uh it's, it's so simple and then you put clear clear varnish on top of that and, and on top of the caulking on top of the caulking wow yeah. great we appreciate you giving a giving right. us a tour so this is a25 a vintage racer uh from 1968 to 70 it ran and it had a buick a buick v8 uh fat chance too and amazing list of accomplishments and you can kind of take a look back here uh you know the 1969 uh eastern division champion high point champion national high point uh north american champion just goes on and on and on orange bowl third place first place in st pete michigan indiana ohio virginia pennsylvania kentucky new jersey this boat has been absolutely everywhere uh in the 68 and 69 season pictures of it being restored it was it was kind of abandoned in someone's backyard uh says the uh the information here uh, even through the 90s and then it was uh, painstakingly restored into the condition uh that you see it today just another beautiful old wooden boat and a uh, competition race boat perfect uh for classic performance so that's a quick tour of the uh, classic and wooden boats here uh, at Lake Greenwood, South Carolina. And uh, if you like the channel, you like the content, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more of this coming. We've got a big summer planned, uh, but that's going to do it for us for now. Classic performance here at the uh, Lake Greenwood Classic.